today's presentation, we're excited to have Mike Stagg talk about chainsaw safety. What a great presentation for October, Mike. Yeah, we figured this was a this was a great, great presentation to run through in October. You know, Jason and I, we talk about, you know, what's what topics we want to share and things we want to, to cover throughout the year. And, you know, when when October time frame was rolling around, we're thinking, you know, this would be great. Chainsaw safety, it works really well for us here. Um, because these are such such dangerous machines. We want to make sure we get our hands around them so that when we're working with these with these chainsaws, that, that we're just doing it in a safe way. So things we're going to cover today, um, we want to understand the saw. Uh, we don't want to look like our, our, our friend Jason Voorhees over here. Um, so we're going to figure out what kind of common hazards there are and <clears throat> the, the different pieces of personal protective equipment we have to have when we're operating the saw. And then how we actually operate that saw safely. <clears throat> so first off, just about the chainsaw. Okay, I, we've all seen chainsaws, I'm sure. But just a little bit about this, what I wanted to cover here. You know, you have your bar and you have your chain. The chain wraps around the bar, obviously. But one of the most important parts of this chainsaw is this kickback protection with, with, with the chain break. And we'll talk about why that's so incredibly important here in just a little bit when we talk about hazards of the saw. But if the chainsaw you don't have, if the chainsaw you have doesn't have one of these chain breaks, this, you want to make sure it's got one. Okay, You want to make sure it has one on there that is a critical piece of safety equipment. And now you see, you know, you have places here where you refill the saw chain oil and the, the throttle lock and the stop choke control, the throttle control, all these things. They're all super, super important pieces of equipment. We'll talk about them as we get into this a little bit more about starting the saw and maintaining the saw and things like that. But that kickback protection with that chain break, you know, that's one of the most important parts. And then this area you see here called the kickback zone, because the kickback zone is somewhere we want to avoid when we're, when we're using a chainsaw. And we'll talk about that in here again in just a minute. There are different kinds of saws as well. Okay, you have your, your small chainsaws, which is your eight to 12 inch bar size. Um, and, uh, you know, those, those are really small branches, trees, 6 to 10 inches in diameter. Uh, medium medium saws, 14 to 20 inches. And then your large professional use, more than 20 inch saws. Now, there, there are folks in our organizations who use these large saws. We have arborists, we have foresters inside. And that's their main job is to use these, these big, gigantic chainsaws to, to really do the work that we need them to do out there. And they do a great job with, with making sure that they're safe when they do it. Now, you know, us line level folks, right? We're not an arborist. We're not a trained professional. Maybe we don't grab that 28-inch that bar saw to go out and, and do the work that we're trying to do, okay? Make sure you just use the right saw for the right kind of job, okay? So the small, medium saws, that's probably where we should play for the most part, unless we're that trained professional in our organization that, um, that really has worked with and knows how to use those really large saws and, and are using it for, for those jobs that we need them to do. Because there's a lot of dangerous hazards with, with these chainsaws, right? And we're going to talk about four of them. Four of them that I feel that are that are the most important for us, and they're really easily avoidable, right? First is kickback. Then we'll talk about springback, pull-in, and pushback. So Oh, that's close. That is scary, right? Thawed through. Obviously, we're using a saw. And that saw blade hits something and it kicks back on the, on the user. The, the person in the video mentions if this other tree limb wasn't there to prevent the saw from, from traveling, keep on traveling the arc that it was going on, that saw probably because it was a full rev, completely pumped up, probably would have swung all the way back around and hit the person in their shoulder and their back. Okay. So kickback is a very, very dangerous thing that we want to try to avoid. So kickback ha happens when the chainsaw jolts or jerks upward suddenly, uh, suddenly in an upward direction. Okay. This normally occurs when, when the end portion of the, of the nose of the bar in that what we call the, the danger zone. Okay. It strikes an object and then it's pinched or snagged. Okay. So that upper fourth quadrant of the end of the bar, when that hits the uh, when that hits something causes the 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 machine to violently jerk back upwards towards the user. And why does that happen there? There are a few reasons. Um, 
Number one is the low engine speed, okay? You don't have it going in there at full rev. You don't have it pumped up all the way. You don't have a sharp chain. Um, the, the chain tension is wrong, okay? But the biggest thing is this low engine speed, okay? You might be overreaching. Uh, you might be, you know, reaching out farther than you should or cutting above chest height. Okay, we should always cut a, you know, below chest height. So if you're cutting above chest height, that increases your risk of, of potentially um, of potentially having a kickback event occur. And then incorrect replacement of your chain. You don't have it tensioned right. It's not sharp enough. Okay. Or we contact an object in that danger zone. Okay. That, that critical area of the nose which is that upper fourth quadrant of the end of the saw blade, when something contacts there, you're going to get kickback, okay? So how do we avoid that? You wanna make sure you hold that chainsaw firmly with both hands, okay? We'll talk about holding the saw and using the saw here in just a minute, but as far as you wanna make sure you have that correct hold, that power hold. Uh, don't cut above chest height as we've talked about. Uh, don't let the nose contact an object in that critical area, okay? So again, that critical area, that upper fourth quadrant, of the saw. We don't want to be cutting things in that area, okay? So you want to make sure that when you're making a cut that you can see the end of your saw. That's just the safest way to do it to avoid that kickback. And make sure you cut at high speeds. Make sure you get that saw up to full rev, get that chain going so you can cut and make sure you, you're, you're doing that at the right speed. Now spring back. Spring back occurs when, when you cut a limb and then it releases tension that those limbs are under. Okay, so what we what we want to do to avoid the spring back is to observe those limbs before we make the cut and determine, you know, if I cut this limb because it's buried or because it's under tension, I'm going to get those limbs shooting back up at me. Okay, so you want to make sure you cut on the side that will release the least amount of tension first. So determine which area is buried the farthest which one is under the most tension so you can release the tension gradually. And the best way to do that is to make multiple cuts so you release that tension gradually. Don't cut all the way through that limb, but you want to make multiple notches, multiple cuts in that limb. So as it starts to, as that limb starts to release, it releases that tension gradually and doesn't, you know, suddenly spring back um, against you and potentially injure you. Now, what about pulling? Pulling is the is when the chain at the at the bottom of the bar is pinched, caught, or encounters a foreign object that causes the saw to violently pull you forward. Okay, that's so why it's called the pull in because that's the way the saw is rotating, and you pinch something on the bottom that pulls you in towards towards the object you're trying to cut. So to avoid pulling, start the cut with the chain at full speed. Okay, again, make sure that chain's up at full speed at full rev so you can get a good solid cut when you plunge that, when you plunge your, your chain and your bar into that piece of piece of wood that you're trying to cut. And ensure that bumper spike makes contact with the wood. So what, what is the bumper spike and where is that? So the bumper spike is right above your right above your chain bar. Okay, it's a it's a spike. There's a set of spikes right up above your, your chain bar, near, near, right near the handle. Okay. You want to make sure that those come into contact with the wood because that's going to avoid you being pulled into the wood because you don't have that area for the for the bar and the saw to pull you forward. Now, pushback. Pushback occurs when the top of the chain is pinched. Okay, uh, When the chain at the top of the bar is pinched, caught or encounters an object, causing the saw to go backwards to you. Okay. Where, the, where, where pull in occurs from the bottom, from the chain on the bottom being pinched, Pushback happens from the chain on the top being pinched, okay? So to avoid pushback, don't cut more than one log at a time, okay? We should cut single logs, single one, one log at a time to cut. Don't twist the saw blade when removing it following a, a, a plunge or an underbuck cut, okay? If you, plunge the, if you plunge the saw blade to make a cut, don't twist the saw, okay? That's going to push back on you when you do that. If you do an underbuck cut, same thing, don't twist. And be aware of situations that may pinch the top of the chain. Another thing you can do to avoid pushback, full rev. Make sure you have that saw up at full rev and at high speeds before you start making the cut. You start to see a pattern here, right? Whenever we make our cuts to avoid kickback, spring back, pull in, push back, make sure that saw is up to speed. Cut at high speeds. That helps to avoid a lot of these dangers. <clears throat> now about personal protective equipment. What should we have? What should we wear? And this is every time. Every time we use a chainsaw, gloves, 
Every time we use a chainsaw, hard hat, safety glasses, face shield, steel or composite toed boots, hearing protection. Hearing protection is absolutely vital when using, when using these chainsaws. They're loud pieces of equipment. We want to make sure we're protecting our hearing. So please remember to wear your hearing protection when you're out there. And last but not least is shaps. <clears throat> shaps are also very, very important pieces of equipment. These help protect us if something goes wrong. As we see here, take a look. He's got that saw pumped up to full rev, cutting through these logs. <clears throat> and then watch as he, as he saws down through. As he finishes his cut, that saw violently jerks back right into his leg. You can see the saw, saw bar right there into his leg. If this guy's not wearing his shaps, this goes incredibly wrong. And I'm probably not able to show you this video. Okay, so make sure that you uh, make sure you have your PPE on using your shaps and using the things like you need to. Okay, now as far as when we talk about safe use of the saw, we're going to talk about how you start, how we start the saw safely, holding the saw, how we cut safely, and then the regular maintenance we should go through to make sure that we that our saw stays up to snuff. So when we start the saw, number one, remove the chain guard. Okay, take take the chain guard off, but then engage the chain brake. Remember, I talked to you about that brake, about that chain brake in the front. Push that thing forward, engage the brake. So when you're starting the saw, especially if it's a cold start, that that saw does the the chain doesn't start to go. Okay, you may need to give a little bit of a throttle to a cold to a cold start. So make sure that the chain brake is engaged so the chain doesn't start moving and just the engine starts up. Okay, so engage that chain brake, place the saw down on the ground and ensure the chain is not coming into contact with anything. So make sure that you have a clear space around your chain. Put your right foot through the rear guard handle, then grip the saw firmly with your left hand and pull the cord sharply with your right hand. Okay, now this is important. Okay, and starting the saw and holding the saw is to realize that there is no such thing as a left-handed chainsaw. That's something I found interesting um, while, while doing a little bit more research on this is that there are no there's no manufacturer out there who has made a chainsaw that is considered a left-handed chainsaw. They're all used, they're all for right-handed users, okay? So even if you're left-handed, you have to make sure you're starting the saw and using the saw as if you were a right-handed user. So when we hold the saw, always hold with two hands, okay? Your left hand, comes up around the grip, okay? Your left hand comes up around the grip and your right hand is around the handle, okay? Left hand on the grip, right hand on the handle. Again, there's no such thing as a left-handed saw, so this is the way you gotta hold it, okay? Make sure when wherever you're holding that you close the loop. Now, what do I mean by closing the loop? What do I mean here is a power grip. Power grip is you come and you grasp around and your thumb wraps all the way around to contact your fingers on the other side. Okay, that's your closed loop. That's your that's your power grip. Don't have your thumb out here on the side. Don't have your fingers splayed open. Okay, make sure that you're here. You want to have a good solid hand, hold on that saw. Make sure whenever you're cutting and you're holding that you hold that saw to the side. Okay, don't hold the saw in front of you because if you do get a kickback of it, you don't want it jerking back into you. You want it coming back to your side. And make sure you keep the saw parallel to the ground while you're cutting. Okay, always make sure that the saw when you're cutting that blade is parallel to the ground while you're while you're making your cuts. Now, when we talk about safely cutting, make sure you don't cut above your chest height. When you cut above chest height, you, you have a tendency, and it's very easy to engage that top quarter quadrant of the of the of the bar that we don't want to have engaged. Okay, because that's where we get the kickbacks. So make sure we don't cut above chest height. Don't cut a tree that has greater dimensions than the length of your blade. Okay. Work with a buddy. This is a very, very important thing. Work with a buddy. You want somebody else there. So in case something happens, um, so you can get advice. You can say, which way do you think this tree is going to fall? Do you think this limb's under tension? Where should I start making these cuts? Okay. Get together and talk about it. This is a great way for you to work together. And the last is because if you get tired, if you get fatigued, stop. Okay, if your muscles start to lag and you feel your body starting to starting to get a little bit tired, stop cutting. Okay, chainsaws are are very very dangerous. They're also heavy and they're cumbersome and they're hard sometimes to control. Okay, you have to make sure you're in tip top physical shape and you're not too tired. If you get tired, 
stop using the saw, stop cutting, take a break, let your, let your partner take over. Now, if we're cutting trees and we're, and we're filling trees, what should we do? And how should we do it? First is examine the tree. Make sure that, that we have a clear area. Okay, clear the area out, get people out, get cars and things out that, that, that you can. Okay, is there wind? Is there, if you start to fell this tree, is there wind that's going to possibly push the tree somewhere where you don't want it to go? Determine the direction of the fall. Where do you want the fall to go? Where are you going to cut your notch and your hitch? Okay, where are you going to cut these different things? And then determine your escape route, right? If something happens and something starts going the way you didn't expect it to go, how are you going to get out of there? You know, your escape route, you should determine it to be almost like a 45 degree angle, like uh, an escape route to get your to get your tail end out of there so you can you can get out if you need to. <clears throat> now, we're felling trees. The first cut you make is called a felling notch. And that's the first cut you make, and it shouldn't exceed 20% of that tree's diameter at chest height. So at chest height, shouldn't exceed 20% of the diameter. One of the kind of notches you can make is this open face notch. This is probably one of the most common, and it's also probably the safest one is, that we can make. Okay, that's what you see here on the left-hand side. That's your open face notch. Your second one is the conventional notch that you got here. But you see what we're leaving is it's what's called a hinge. What the hinge does is, is, is it is 10% that's left uncut for the safety of the operator. Now, where does that 10% come into play? That's your 20% from your notch plus the rest of it that's the spelling cut. And your felling cut is your cut that's made very, very last. And this felling cut, you want to make sure it's done on the opposite side of your felling notch, okay? So the cut is on the opposite side of the notch. I know it's a little confusing, um, but it doesn't go all the way through the tree, okay? You want to make sure it doesn't go all the way through because you have to leave that hinge, that 10%. You got to leave it for your safety. So the wind starts to blow or starts to lean or whatever, you can get out of there, okay? So make sure that you, you leave that notch there, um, or excuse me, make sure you leave the hinge there. And you make sure you, you, this felling cut is staggered with the notch. You don't want those two to meet, and because if they meet, you've cut all the way through, and you don't have a not, you don't have a hinge anymore. So make sure that that's staggered with the notch. Now, as far as maintenance goes, okay, every time you use the saw, you have to clean and adjust the chain tension. Okay, make sure the chain is tight and, and secure against the bar. Make sure the the chain is sharp. A sharp saw is a safe saw. Make sure it's safe and make sure it's sharp, okay? Make sure you check in and service the chain oiling system. Make sure you oil the chain every time before you go to make sure that <clears throat> it's going to move safely for you. Tighten all the hardware, inspect the fuel system, inspect the chain brake mechanism, and make sure that that chain brake is actually working. Because if there's a kickback event, what that chain brake is supposed to do is as that violently jerks upward, that chain brake will then be engaged by your hands pushing forward on the bar and cause that chain to immediately stop. That's what we want to have happen. So make sure you inspect that and, and that it works right, okay? These other things, every 10 hours of use, you know, lubricating the socket tips, sprocket tips, excuse me, um, checking the spark plugs and the spark arrestor screen, every 20 hours of use, replacing the fuel filter, but then really consult your manual, okay? Consult your user's manual. Wait, does that mean you gotta keep it? You gotta read it? Yeah, it does, <laughs> okay? You gotta read your user's manual, you have to make sure you know the annual maintenance procedures that need to be done for your saws. Make sure they stay in good use. You want to make sure that there's no rusting uh, of the chain. No, is it, it's tightened and it's good and ready for you to use every time you go and use it. So when we're thinking about chainsaws, avoid complacency, right? Just avoid being complacent with this thing. It's a, it's a, we, we see them in movies and you go to haunted houses this time of year and, and they're revving chainsaws in your face and things like that. But when we're out using them, let's avoid complacency. Use the correct PPE and always use that PPE. Practice safe cutting. Stay away from that from that danger zone in that upper, upper quarter quadrant. Okay, And then make sure you regularly maintain these things. Sharp saws, tight, tight chains against the bars, okay, so that we can we can make sure we stay safe. All right. Well, Jason, that's all. That's all we got. Are there, are there any questions out there? Folks, if you got any questions, please type those into the chat box. We'd love to answer those right now. Um, we uh, appreciate Mike taking the time to give us this great information. Um, good stuff that you that you had in that presentation, Mike. 
uh, looking for for questions. Not seeing a whole lot of a whole lot of questions there, which I think means you did a great job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, wonderful, wonderful information, Mike. Uh, any final words before we wrap up? No, I think I think you know just just uh, be smart. Y'all who use these chainsaws, you know how to do it. You know how to do it the right way. Just make sure you do it the right way every time. Make sure you wear your PPE um and just just be safe. Awesome. Appreciate that. Folks, we're going to be back here talking about uh measuring your safety program, measuring your safety accountability uh at 10 o'clock. If you haven't signed up for that, go to utahtrust.gov and click on training and events. Other than that, folks, go out and have a safe day. Thanks, everyone.